Hey guys, so let's get right into it. Father God, first and foremost, I just give you all the honor. I give you all the glory, Father God. I thank you for using me as a vessel to speak to your children. I ask, Father God, that you will cover myself and those listening as well as this word in the blood of Jesus. I pray and ask that you give us forgiveness for every sin that we have committed knowingly and unknowingly, Father God. I ask that we do things that's only pleasing in your sight. We give you all the honor and all the glory. We ask that you go ahead of us and that you prepare our way, Father God. And we ask that you continue to protect us in all of our ways, that you straighten any crooked path, Father God. And we thank you for everything that you have done. I ask that you command your angels concerning us to encamp about around us, Father God, that you protect our homes, that you protect our ear gates and our eye gates, Father God. I pray, Father God, for your Holy Spirit to be filled in me as I command my flesh, Father God, to stand down. In Jesus' mighty name, we give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. We thank you for this word, Father God. I pray that they test the spirits, that they bring this word back to you, confirming whether or not if this is a right now word from you to them, Father God, in this season. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Hey, guys. I know that it's late, but let me get right into this word. Um, So what it's about is um, some of you are currently in or you're coming out of testing. I know it always seems like it's a test going on, right? But the enemy is relentless and God wants to make sure that we are um, strong and that we are bold, right? And that we are showing the the fruits of his spirit. So um, a lot of you guys were in testing or you're coming on. You did not perceive what was happening, what was going on. But God was testing you to see your dedication to him. Were you dedicated to him or were you dedicated to the promise? OK, when he removed the promise out of sight, out of your carnal sight, were you still dedicated and faithful to him? Were you still trusting him? OK, so one of the scriptures that he gave me was Genesis 22 and 1. And it says sometime later, God tested Abraham's faith. Abraham, God called. Yes, he replied, here I am. So, um, dad gave me that scripture and I was like, huh, it just made sense. Like tested Abraham's faith. Okay. When things aren't looking how we think they're supposed to look, are you still going to trust me? And that's one of the things I've been noticing with a lot of his children lately, um, who he has been bringing um in my path and bringing me into their path is a lot of them are growing so weary and their doubt is at a, at an all-time high and you guys make sure that anytime that you you come in contact with someone who is like that just definitely intercede for them in prayer pray for them you know cover them because it's nothing but a spiritual attack and we all face them at you know different times in our journey so um keep them in your prayers because that's really all it is is just a uh, is just a spiritual attack. And the thing is, um, God does not have us go through these tests to, you know, break us down. That's not what's going to happen. If anything, it's going to strengthen our faith in him because he's a very faithful guy. He's always been faithful. Um, but one of the things, one of the other scriptures he led me to was 1 Kings 8.22. And what that was, was Solomon's prayer of dedication. And he had me look up the word dedication Dad sometimes will have me look up words, even though I think I know the meaning. Sometimes he'll have me look them up because it's, it's something in the definition that he wants me to see. Um, and so dedication is a feeling of very strong support or loyalty to someone or something. The quality of being dedicated or committed to a task or a purpose. Right. So what he was just telling me was, um, during this testing, he wanted to see if you were going to be loyal to him or were you more loyal and dedicated to the promise that he could give. So when he removed it, what was your reaction? What were you going to think? What were you going to say? What was in your heart? Were you still praying to him? Were you still praising him? Were you still trusting him? Things like that. So um, and in that, in the Solomon's prayer of dedication, really what it spoke to, um, it just really speaks to how God was faithful in keeping his promises, you know, and how God was always faithful the whole time. Every promise that he has spoken, he kept it. Um, and so, like, for instance, David's offspring being, you know, he inherited the throne. He was seated on the throne. And so then um, later towards like the end of the passage, Solomon prayed. And now, O God of Israel, let your word that you promised your servant David, my father, come true. And that's the thing when um and as I was um reading in a word and just um 
ministering and just waiting on Holy Spirit to really speak to me, I was listening to Miss Yolanda Adams and she has this song called I'm Gonna Be Ready. And I was listening to it. As I was listening to it, the words were standing out to me. They was like really like resonating in my spirit. And on um the chorus, it just and I'm gonna read the lyrics to you guys. I don't know if you guys ever heard of this song, but if you guys never heard of this song, please go and listen to it. It's a beautiful song. But she says, Sight beyond what I see, you know what's best for me. Put prepare my mind, prepare my heart for whatever comes, I'm gonna be ready. Strength to pass any test. I feel like I'm so blessed. With you in control, I can't go wrong. Cause I always know I'm gonna be ready. And oh my goodness, when I say it really like was resonating in my spirit because that's what's been going on. It was a test. But a lot of you guys were doing so well because a lot of you guys were in that posture to where you were so focused on God. It did not matter what was going on on the right or on the left. And you definitely weren't looking behind you because you knew that it was just a distraction. It would have took you off focus. And the thing is, in this test, a lot of you... <laughs> woo, you guys were doing so good. A lot of you guys were just focused on God. You guys may have even slipped for a little moment, some of you, but you got right back on board. You were right back in alignment. So, and that was the thing. Your heart posture was just focused on God. You were like, okay, it don't matter what's going on. It don't matter if this is my ordained spouse. You know, I trust that it is. But even if it's not, I know that you have someone better for me. It does not matter if this job does not come through. If it doesn't, I know that you have something better for me. It does not matter if this bill is late. I know you're working on something better. You guys have always just kept this posture to where in the back of your mind, you're just like, I trust you, God. I don't know what you're doing because it seems everything kind of seems kind of crazy right now. You, you know, I don't know what's going on. It's not looking the way that I thought it was going to look, but I trust you. And that's really where you guys' posture has been. And that's been a very beautiful thing. And God is honoring that. So... And that was the song that, that he set out for me. And I was like, okay. And another thing that um, he was showing me was a lot of doubles. Dad has been showing me doubles, you guys, for probably like the past week. And I'm like, Dad, okay, what are you saying? What are you saying? He was like, double portion, double for your trouble. And I was like, okay, let me just, you got to confirm that that's what you're really saying to me, right? And I was like, so, and I said it in my in my secret place. And it was so crazy because I felt like he wanted me to put out a video in regards to the double portion. And so all the double things that he was showing me and I did not see another girl put it out because that's what like really in my heart. I was like, okay, if I see somebody else and I know that that's what you wanted me to do and I didn't do it. So, you know, another one of your, um, your vessels put it out and I seen it and I was like, oh, dad, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so, um, and one of the things that he was showing me was Isaiah 61 7 he would not let me get away from that scripture either so Isaiah 61 and 7 and it states you guys I'm going to read it for you but make sure that you go back on your own and you meditate on it um by yourself but what he was what he was saying um Isaiah 61 and 7 for your shame you shall have double and for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion therefore in their land they shall possess the double everlasting joy be unto them and that's the thing you guys that has been speaking to me about restoration about celebration about rejoicing <laughs> and I just did another video so you guys are probably going to see both of those videos uploaded tonight but this is another one that he wanted me to touch on because I didn't really touch on this in the last video. But he kept speaking to me rejoicing and um, he was speaking to me also restoration, celebration. So that's another thing. You guys, God is not going. To, he's going to honor your testing. You're you passing these tests. He's going to honor you being patient. He's going to honor you trusting him and being faithful, waiting on him. He's going to honor it. And he's going to honor it with double portion. OK, so while you guys were waiting and thinking that everybody was like elevating before you and everybody is being blessed and you're still waiting, that's listen, God is going to he is going to bless you double. You're not remember it, but it's not even going to compare. OK, because he's going to be honoring you double for your shame. OK, so um, he said everlasting joy should be unto you. So you guys. Definitely go meditate on that scripture. Ask God to give you personal revelation on what it's going to mean in your life. Okay. And then another one, um, Romans eleven thirty three, it's for, it says, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of wisdom of the wisdom and the knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments 
in his ways past finding out. And that's the thing. God's ways and his thoughts are not, we can't even comprehend them. Okay. So he's saying, stop trying to figure it out. Just trust that he already has it figured out. Okay. Because his ways and his thoughts, you're not going to understand them, especially if you're trying to come from a carnal viewpoint of thinking. So he's just saying, just his ways, you're not going to figure it out. You're not going to figure it out. Don't try to piece and put together how you think things should be because you're just going to drive yourself crazy. So just trusting him and like you've continue, like you've been doing because a lot of you guys have been doing it. And like he said, um, like it, like he told me, you know, he was testing you to see your dedication to him. Were you dedicated to him or were you dedicated to the promise? So. So guys, yes, just go and meditate on these scriptures. Um, 1 Kings 8.22, Isaiah 61.7, Romans 11.33, Genesis 22 and 1. And you guys just go ask God to give you further revelation um, on what he is saying to you individually. And like I said, um, rejoice, celebrate. The promises are coming true. Um a lot of you guys did really good. You guys passed the test. So God is honoring that. So 